Hey there, it's Thorn. Today I would like to teach you how to make this beautiful pineapple lace edging. Now just to briefly source the pattern, it's from a screenshot or scan of a Japanese language pattern book that I found on Pinterest. About the only thing I could find out about this pattern is that it is associated with the name Emmy Grand, as you'll have seen in the title of this video. I believe Emmy Grand is a brand of crochet thread, and there's more, which I will tell you la later on. Now we're, we're going to go ahead and get into the tutorial, but stick around if you would like to know what I did find out about this pattern. There's also going to be a fun surprise, which involves you getting to vote on what I do next. Okay, so here we are. Let's look at our materials first. So for this example piece, I'm using Red Heart in the Patty Green colorway, and it is a medium four worsted weight. And for the example that I'll be working up, I'll be using, um, this is also Red Heart Super Saver in the Tea Leaf colorway, and it's also a four weight yarn. Actually, all three of the yarns that I'm showing today are for the third one, which I still have most of it in the skein with the label, is Big Twist in the chocolate brown color. And I'll be using this for the the extra little picot edging after we do the main pine, the main pine, pineapple. <laughs> with these I edit out my stuttering more than most but pineapple is just a hard word to say sometimes so anyway right and I'm using a 5.0 millimeter hook and this one is from PJB Boutique on, on Etsy I'll link their shop I, I love their like space galaxy themed hook handles because they're really pretty and also very comfortable. I have my scissors and you might also want a yarn needle for weaving in ends. I don't usually use one of those, but you, you could also use stitch markers if you use those. Um, but those are pretty much optional. So I'll be using US terms for the crochet stitches and the ones we'll be needing to know today are chain, single crochet, double crochet, and V stitch. I'm not sure if there's a standard way to explain or refer to the V stitch, so I'll just be walking you through it but I feel like my way of explaining is a bit cumbersome, so um, let me know if there's, if you know of a better way to talk about the V-stitch. <laughs> we, ne we have to talk about the V-stitch. Anyway, so huge shout out to my chosen brother, Brian, who is a film um, editor, because they helped me f figure out a a way to get my my camera actually above my hands <laughs> i didn't have to buy buy any extra um equipment it's just a stack of books and a long thin object that i'm resting my phone on and it it works perfectly <laughs> so so that means that you'll pretty much be seeing me crochet the whole thing i I will speed up parts, but I won't have to leave and then come back and show you what I've done in, in the meantime, which is nice. So to start with, we chain six. And then to start row one, we go into this first chain, which is the sixth chain from our hook, 
and we do two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet, and that's our first row. It's always a bit tricky to work into chains, but luckily we don't have to do it much after this, if at all. I don't think we have to do it at all, actually, which is nice. Okay, now we chain five and turn. And for row two, we skip these two double crochet, and then in this chain two space, we will create two double crochet, chain two, two more double crochet, chain two, two more double crochet. So there are three like double crochet columns coming out, and then we chain five and turn. I can think of fun, interesting things to say while I'm doing this, I will, but otherwise we're just going to speed up. And you can watch me crochet really fast while you listen to music, which I, um, I wrote, so, I don't know. <laughs> The yarn fell off my table. So, yeah, the the music is on my band camp. I, I use it partly because it's it's just easier because I, I own the rights to it, obviously. But also because it's nice to share it with people, so. Yeah, that'll be in the description, too. Just double checking that, yep, okay, that's, that's row two finished. One, two, three, four, five, and then turn. Oops, I keep bumping things. But it's so much better than the previous setup where my, my arm kept hurting because I was leaning weirdly. Anyway, so row three, we skip these two double crochet and then in this chain two space we do two double crochet and then we chain two and do a double we chain two and do another two double crochet and then we chain five over this middle bit and then repeat this pattern over here. So it's two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet. So the chain five becomes the base of the pineapple. And then it has these columns. I, I, I kind of think of the side patterns as the, uh, um, the attendance of the pine pineapple, ha having done quite a bit of pineapple lace it's just it's it's one of my favorite patterns so i'm really happy that i can help you i i'm i'm happy that i i can help anyone who might have trouble with the pineapple lace charts and might prefer a video to tutorial on it right so that's two double two chain two double okay chain five
Right, I believe we are on row four. And first we have to chain five so we can turn. And now we we just continue working in these in this chain two space in in between the two sets of two double crochet. And we do the same thing as in the previous row most of the time. So it's two double, chain two, two double. And by double, I mean double crochet. Now we have to continue building up the pineapple in the center here. So we chain two, double crochet, chain five, and then double crochet. So there's another little open loop structure on top of the chain five space. Then we chain two, do our old friend, the two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet. When I was working up this pattern the first time for the green, the, the dark green, I enjoyed the fact that there wasn't a bunch of random amounts of chains. Like it, it, it makes sense. It's always either two or a bit later in, in, in the pattern, three chains or five. So I, I feel like it's easier to rem remember. Speaking of five, Time to chain five. And turn. So now we're on row five. This is where it gets a little bit more exciting. We do the two double crochet, chain two, Two double crochet and then we chain three and do seven double crochet in this chain five space. This fan is basically what we build up the pineapple from. Let me double check. I have seven, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Chain another three and we do the side pattern, which is the two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet. I enjoy the fact that this is very symmetrical. All right, chain five, turn. And now we're on row six. Two double crochet. Chain two, two double crochet. Chain 
chain three. Then single crochet in the first double crochet. Sorry about bumping the camera. Then another th three chains, single crochet in the next double crochet, another chain three, or three chains as I said last time, and we just keep doing that all the way down. Yep, I think I've got all the loops anchored correctly. And then we chain three. Two double crochet. And that's in this chain two space as, as, um, as always chain two, two double crochet. And I'll take away the green, um, the green, the, the dark green example and let, let you see just this against the white tablecloth. The, The sun is coming in in a way I was not intending <laughs> or not expecting but anyway that's what it looks like so far it's let's see yeah, I think this is the back according to the chart so it would lay like that okay well after playing around with the lighting available to me. I think this is as good as it's going to get, so I may mess with it in post. But also, um, thank you for your patience, and let us continue. We turned before actually doing the turning chain, so this is row 7. Chain 5, turn. I mean, we're about to do row 7. So two double crochet uh, chain two and then two more d d um, double crochet I, <laughs> I got lost in thought and forgot to say the rest so next I believe it's chain three. Yes, chain three. And now we single crochet in this chain three space, not this one, the, the first loop. Because we want to make a pyramid, so each each row has a smaller amount of loops, thus creating a pineapple. Then we chain three, another single crochet in the next chain three space, and we continue like that until the last one. Right, and then after the last loop we do another chain three and two double crochet in this chain two space chain 
chain two and then two more double crochet. Chain five. Turn. Row eight. Chain two. Sorry. Two. Two double crochet. Chain two. Two double crochet. Chain three, single crochet in the first chain three space that is a loop instead of just the, the sidebar part. Chain three, single crochet in the next chain three space and so forth. Chain three, double crochet, two double crochet actually. And this is where we're starting the base of the next pineapple. So instead of just doing two two more chains and then two more double crochet we do that twice more sort of like in the beginning when we had three columns of two double crochet separated by these two chains we're doing that again so the next pineapple can emerge from the deep Chain five, turn. I'm going to lay this down for you to look at for a minute while I stretch. Okay, I am back and we're on row nine. Two double crochet. We can no longer auto autopilot this because we're starting the next pineapple. And when I say you, or we, I mean me. <laughs> so, chain two, two double crochet. Chain five. And then we skip the middle two double crochet and make the next side pattern. That's that's what I tend to think of these these things. This this whole mo motif as we'll just call them the side patterns. So we make the next one right here. And just to clarify, that's two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet. There, so that's where the next pineapple is going to grow out of. But we still have the old pineapple to finish. Well, it's, it's not even like halfway done yet. But the pineapples go quicker as you go up because there are fewer loops. Speaking as a... <laughs> speaking as a pineapple expert and <laughs> an old hat at pineapples anyway uh, chain three and anchor the single crochet in this um, chain three space 
the loop, not the the bar across. Chain three, another single crochet, and continue. Then we chain three and make our regular side pattern. My yarn just fell off the table and I'm fine with that because it's less stressful than trying to... Pulling it up from the floor is less stressful than <laughs> trying to keep it from rolling off the table while I'm filming. So, you know, I'm, I'm just going to roll with it, so to speak. So, two double crochet. Chain two, two double crochet. And we chain five and turn. Row ten. Let's do our little side motif. Chain three, single crochet in this loop. Chain three, single crochet in the next loop. Chain three, single crochet in the next loop, which is also the last loop for this row. Um, chain three, we do the first of the side motifs for this pineapple. So that's chain two, sorry, two double crochet, chain two, and then two double crochet. Chain two, double crochet in this chain five space. Chain five. Another double crochet. And they're both Ideally, they should be kind of in a V, but they, the, the bottoms aren't actually anchored to any of these stitches. So, um, if you want, you could try to anchor them in the middle chain of the five, just to make sure you have the V. But I don't really think it matters that much. It, or at least it matters to me less than my hatred of working into chain stitches. So, you know, with, with these patterns, it, it's. I feel like there's a lot of freedom just depending on what you want want to do. It doesn't have to be set in stone. So then after that, so we change two, uh, then it's two double crochet. Chain two and then two double crochet. And of course, chain five for the turning chain. See, now we're starting to get this um, straight, th there's the straight edge, then the pineapple's going off at an angle. This one's not quite finished, and this one is far from finished, but you can start to get the idea. Then we'll have an extra pico edge down here on the right. So we're on row 11, and we make our little side motif. Chain 
chain three. And here's where we do the seven double crochet in this chain five space. Sorry about that, had to evict one of my hairs from the yarn. That happens a lot. One, two, three, four, five, seven, I think. Okay. Then we chain three. Two double crochet. Chain two. Two double crochet. I was looking at my version of the written pattern, and I just realized I forgot to write down this bit, so glad I caught that before posting my version of my translation of the chart to a pattern. <laughs> so next we have chain three, single crochet in okay right. <laughs> I was like where is the last where is the loop? Here it is, single crochet in this chain three space, chain three, the last loop, and then single crochet in the other chain three space. We're actually not quite done with this pineapple, but we're done with the, the stacking loops. The pyramid of loopies, I was calling them last time. So chain three, Two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet, chain five for the turning chain, and turn. We're actually close to being done. So, row 12, two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet. The rows are about to get a lot shorter because you stop working on the previous pineapple after it's done but I'll show you how that works. Chain three, anchor the, a single crochet in the last, the, the top loop of the pineapple. Chain three, then we have two du double crochet in this chain two space, chain two, two double crochet. So, you know, the standard side motif that we've been working with. Chain three. And here's the part where we begin the loops for the other one. So single crochet in the, that first double crochet, chain three, single crochet in the next one, and we'll keep going until we get to the last one. Okay, yeah, there are, there are the loops. Chain three. 
to double crochet in this chain two space. Chain two, two double crochet. And we chain five and turn. That's how it's looking so far. Two double crochet. Chain two. Two double crochet. Chain three. And then just like last time we do a single crochet in this chain three loop. Chain three single crochet in the next loop, and so on. You should always have a chain three line that that comes before the, the chain three space that you work into, just in case it's hard to tell which which one is the um, correct space. Well, I went ahead and did the, the chain three on the other side because I was on a roll and didn't see that I'd already done the last <laughs> the last of these loops, but that's fine. Next we do two double crochet. Chain two, two double crochet. And here's where we kind of close off this pineapple and this part of the pattern. We chain two and then we skip this whole thing and go to this chain two space over here and just do a single crochet in here. So it's kind of, um, it's kind of more st structured and attached. And then when we turn, we only chain three instead of five. Like that. Now, here is where I think the music and the speeding up will come in, actually, because um, if, if you're not ready to end your, your pineapple lace, you can just keep doing rows eight through 13. That should take you through a whole pattern re repeat. But if you are ready to end, then you don't start a, a new one. In, instead, you just continue doing this part until the, the end of the last pineapple. And I, um, the, I will show you what that looks like and and walk you through the last bit but now that this one's finished then we we don't need anything special on the two sides so just keep doing those like like we've been doing and then i'll show you how to end the the last couple of rows
Okay, we are at the second to last row. As you can see, the, the straight edge is slanting that way, or if it's the direction that it is in the chart, it'd be that way, but this is the, the current direction that I'm working. So to finish it off, we, we have our chain five turning chain and we make two double crochet in this chain five space. Sorry, chain, we make two double crochet in this chain two space. So I have the first one here. Chain two, two more double crochet in that chain two space. Then we chain three single crochet in this top loop of the pyramid or the pineapple, chain three, two double crochet in this chain two space, chain two, two double crochet, Chain five, turn for the very last row. Two double crochet. Chain two. Two double crochet. And then to finish it off, we chain two and again skip the top of the pineapple and go over here to this chain two space and single crochet. Then we cut that working yarn. And that is part one. There's still a little bit more to go with the second portion of the pattern, but this is looking good so far. So if you've made it this far, um, pat yourself on, on the back, grab some coffee or tea or ice cream or juice or something. And um, I will meet you back here in uh, just, just a minute. All right, we're ready for our second color of yarn. Obviously, you don't have to use a second color. Wow, this is really blurry. Well, it's Red Heart Super Saver um, Chocolate Brown. It's not as dark as the camera is making it look right now. It's more of a warm, well, chocolate brown. But in any case, I thought I would use a, se a separate color so that we could more easily see what we're doing. So we want to attach this yarn right here. And the way I figure that out personally is I count these turning chain loops. So one, two, three, and then the fourth one. And the, the ones you're counting are like if if you have if you have it upright like like this and then it slants across the, the top. You count down from the top where you just bound off the yarn. One, two, three, four. And then the border goes down, down this way. So let's attach our yarn. Again, it's a four weight medium worsted. I feel very fancy knowing the weights and stuff of the yarn this time, because it's not random yarn from my stash. It's, well, it is from my stash, but like, I know where I got this yarn because I got it recently for the mermaid graph gam that I, that, that I made that you may have seen in um, other videos. <laughs> so I'm turning us around 
so that I can work this way from right to left. So I'm counting one, two, three, here's the fourth loop. I attach that with a single crochet. And for the first row of this part, there are actually just two rows, so it's a very simple um, picot edging. So we chain three, single crochet into the same space, chain three, and here's where we make our V-stitch. So we anchor one leg in the same chain five space where we're currently working, and we start to make a double crochet. Then when we have two loops on the hook, we yarn over again, and we anchor the other leg in the next chain five space. And then we have three loops on the hook. And then we bring the yarn through all three of them. Kind of like a half double crochet, but this is the way this is the way I do um, the V stitch with double crochet because since since you have an extra leg and an extra stitch that you're combining into one top part that that means there's going to be an extra loop on the on the hook that's the way i understand it anyway i was hoping that using dark yarn would be mitigated by the white background but it might be making it worse, so let me know what, what you think, <laughs> if you have any ideas. Anyway, so we chain another three, and we single crochet into this chain five space that, that the second leg of the V is anchored on. Then we, then we chain three, we do another V stitch, anchor it in this one, and then yarn over, anchor it in this one, and pull through those three loops. And we just keep doing that till we run out of chain five loops. So I'll just do that. Okay, yeah, the, the nice thing about this particular row is that there's not something different you have to do to end the row. You, you just continue the, the um, re repeat until the last chain five space. So as you can see, it ends with chain three and then single crochet. And, and here's the last V, v stitch. You can see that kind of... Oh, there we go. It's better against the white background. So to turn, we just chain one, turn. Just to be transparent, I should mention that I slightly changed the beginning of this row from what I saw on the pattern. I don't think it had a, a loop at the beginning, but I just like that better. So that's the way we're uh, doing it. So we've chained one, then for the second row, we single crochet into this first chain three space. We chain three and then single crochet into the same space. So we're creating a little pic picot. 
like a pointy loop. I love lace with little points, which I realized is basically basically created by the Pico stitch. So you're going to see a lot of that from me. Then we chain three and single crochet in the next chain three space. So we have the Pico and the bridge. They're both made of um, sets of three chains. And then after this single crochet, we make another little picot of three chains, single crochet in the same space, which again is going to be hard to see. Nope, okay. And we just keep doing this um, till the end of the row. So I will finish this and show you how we're looking afterward. Oops, I forgot the Pico. That would be terrible. Okay, see you soon. Okay, now that I've checked that we have all of our picots, because if, if you are sharp-eyed, you might have noticed that I accidentally skipped a couple at the end here, but we have them now. Um, so then, see, see this first loop that I um, added in at, at the beginning of the last row? Um, you, you end this, the second row by making three chains and then doing a single crochet into that chain three space of the loop. And then you just cut the yarn. And that is our new pineapple lace. So that's fun. Now we have two colors, and even though this is really hard to see when I'm working on it, the, the brown, I'm glad that we had a sep separate color because with, with, when it's all one color, you, you just can't really see where, where it joins on. I probably should have used a lighter colored yarn for this just so it shows up better on camera, but we, we uh, live and learn. I still have to weave in these ends, but I'm, I'm really happy with how this came out. It, doing this much took me like a couple hours at most. I'll have to add up the filming time, and it, it, it is a bit longer than the video you'll see because I've I've um, edited out some stuff and sped up some stuff, but still, it's it didn't take that long, so I, I, I hope that I've shown you that lace doesn't have to be this huge month-long process that, <laughs> like, the, the yearly lace ritual. <laughs> I would I would attend a yearly rich I would attend a yearly lace ritual definitely but um speaking of graph cans all all of this is um scrap yarn from my mermaid graph can and I'm going to add this pineapple border to my current graph can that I'm working on the modern wild hunt one which is of my patron god Gwyn so 
I'll I'll link that down below. It's it's a chart in my um, the Etsy shop, which which is not not safe for work. Just so you know, there's uh, this chart is safe for work, but most of the others aren't. So just bear that in in mind. <laughs> bear that in mind is not an intentional pun, but I will I will take it. it um, if you know, you you know. So anyway, since I'm attaching it, I'll probably attach it here and I won't get to have this nice Pico border. So I was thinking there are other chain five loops. I could just adapt it and go down, down this side. Then I get to have the pointy lace, which I, I like as, as we have, as, as we have established. And then I would have the points of the pineapples, but also the points of the pico, and it would be like fractal points. <laughs> so I think that's probably what I'll do. I encourage you to take this, to, to use this pattern or parts of it how, however you would like. Obviously I don't own the rights to it, I'm just showing you, I'm, I'm just bringing it to you in tu tutorial form. And if anyone has any information on where this pattern came from, or if you can read J Japanese better than I can, because I I feel like maybe a native speaker could read the the blurry PDF that I showed earlier, but um, since I'm I'm not at at that level, I just have. I just have no I just have no idea of what most of it could be like I can get a few words here and there I I did see the word for lace which makes sense uh, as, as well as the the name Emmy Grand but speaking of Emmy Grand it's time to bring you back to me in the past because I filmed that part earlier so I'll I'll leave you with that. Go tell Past Thorn High for me. <laughs> hey, thanks for um, sti sticking around. Um, I hope that you enjoyed the tu tutorial. Um, I am still new at doing video tu tutorials, so if there's anything that I, I can do to make it easier to follow or any su suggestions you have, please let, let me know. So, about the pattern. Um, again, this is the first example because I haven't filmed myself making the second one yet. I have to go back and do that. So anyway, about the pattern, as I said before, basically the only thing I could find out from this PDF was the name, um, Emmy Grand, and that was a stroke of luck. I, I just, I was trying to figure out what what the katakana characters for that name was. With my minimal J Japanese, I could tell that it was a name borrowed from in English, but it took me a few tries to figure out exactly what the English version of the katakana name was. One of my first guesses was Amy Grant, And then it was just a stroke of luck that I stumbled across something with the name Emmy Grand, and then I found that there was there was more um, crochet stuff associated with that name. I don't know if this was a person, like a crochet per personality, or just a brand name. If anyone's more familiar with that, please let me know. Sadly, while I couldn't figure out much about the origin of the pattern I just showed you, I did stumble across a different book full of um, Emmy Grand lace patterns. In fact, it's called Lace Work to Emmy Grand, which basically means lace work with Emmy Grand. So that's what makes me think this is at least a, a persona, if not an actual person, because you're, you're kind of being invited to create something with this person. 
So, yeah. Um, <laughs> so anyway, I found a PDF of this book on Etsy for two, for two dollars. I'll link the shop down down below. And I was like, yes, it's a business purchase. Also, now I have a treasure trove of patterns that I can choose from the next time I want to do one of these tu tutorials because now it is a Japanese language book um, but the PDF is so much hi higher quality the images are very crisp and clear and the the patterns are charts if you can read charts um, it's it's nice because they they can go across language barriers and then also I, I do have some knowledge of Jap Japanese, so I can look something up if I, if I need to use the written, ins um, the written ins instructions. And if I get really stuck, then I can just um, get a bit creative and come up with something that looks similar to the pattern, even if it's not exactly what the writer may have in intended. Either way, we will have a finished version of those patterns that I can share with you as a tu tu tutorial. So, voting time. <laughs> Your options for the next tutorial video are Lace Bird, Lace Mushroom, or Lace Bunny. At least I think those are the three options. Go with the with the pictures on the screen because I'm doing this from mem memory, <laughs> and I'll also have them down in the um, down in the description below. But anyway, I would I would love to hear which one you would like me to do next. I think the voting will be open, let's say till July fifth. 15th. I'll also have this pattern, the the pineapple lace, and the voting on the next pattern on my blog, Thornwing Crochet uh, WordPress. I'll I'll have the URL to that down in down in the box too. <laughs> so yeah, I think that's all for right now. I hope that you enjoyed this these adventures in lace. Um, I can't wait to bring you more obscure lace charts from various corners of the, the internet. <laughs>